Welcome to Data Drivers. I'm your host, Andrew Smith of Think Uncommon. In this series, we explore essential strategies for retailers to harness the power of data and analytics. We'll guide you through the tools and techniques that enable a deep understanding of your customers' preferences and behaviors. You'll learn how to optimize everything from backend operations to logistics and supply chain management, maximizing efficiency and even enhancing customer satisfaction. Before we get started, don't forget to check the description below for information and news about what's coming up from the Retail Cloud Alliance. Now, let's dive in. Given the emphasis and importance of privacy, retailers are under immense pressure to be open and transparent with the data that they collect and really to be clear from an experience perspective, the value exchange that they can offer customers in terms of when customers are able to opt in to share their data about where they've been, what they do and what they're interested in, how are retailers gonna use it? And I think how retailers have really adapted that strategy is number one, by being clear on understanding that not all customers are the same. Some customers are very open to sharing their data as long as they're getting a good experience or loyalty or rewards, they'll opt in and do whatever they need to. But on the other end of the spectrum, there are some individuals who are very protective about their information and are gonna be very selective with who they offer and why. So I think as long as organizations can be really clear on acknowledging customers exist on a spectrum and then being open and transparent with that value exchange, we're seeing retailers successfully navigate the complexities of privacy and focus on delivering experiences that people remember. As we speak, retailers are already either implementing or implemented their strategies towards customer data collection, especially focusing on customer privacy being the first, and they leverage multiple techniques. If it's a physical shopper, the data that are collected are different and it differs from the online shopper. For example, the stores collect data and that's very concerning for customers are all about the data feed coming from either videos or the store sensors and devices that sense data. The privacy and neutralization of this could be easily achieved by vectorizing and image anonymization. These are some of the techniques which market follows. While to achieve this, obviously, the critical factor to consider is about you know how extensive we are to leverage edge computing. So we are able to process the data locally without sending the data outside your location. Is there a right policies that are being defined for it? That's more important. While that's been on the customer side, organizations are leveraging, not trying to really look at their real feed of data, rather use a synthetic data that can actually train their you know, models as they leverage technology, for example, you know, for the image recognition, right? And that helps further extend the customer loyalty and you know, respect to their data collection. Trust is the cornerstone. It's been a cornerstone of marketing for a lot of marketers ever since the advent of the internet where, you know, we are now facile interacting with retailers on any kind of digital platform. Trust has become the fundamental differentiating factor for a lot of successful retailers. And how do retailers build this trust? For one example, a one component of trust that you talked about is the security aspects of trust, right? If a retailer maintains my confidence, I have the confidence in the retailer, the retailer source the data well, doesn't allow the data to be hacked and so on, the customers feel good about it, right? And unfortunately, the more the interactions, the digital interactions we have as consumers with the retailers, and the more the platforms, you know, we have mobile apps, we have social media interactions, we have website interactions, the more the vulnerability of how it could be compromised for cybersecurity. As a result of that, many of the uh, marketers have gone to the time-tested security measures like two-factor authentication in all the communications, many of them also providing close spaces for interactions with that. What privacy first means to the retail customers that I work with is being proactive, not reactive. Oftentimes retailers are, are caught flat footed when there are breaches with customer information or maybe company information. Being privacy first really means incorporating privacy and cybersecurity as a core part of your strategy. That means being proactive with how things could go wrong, being proactive with how to alert and how to monitor and how to communicate when things go wrong. Number two, Privacy first also means keeping the sense of responsible AI as a core component for how companies go to market. So having a responsible AI policy that governs and makes clear with what privacy means to customers, employees, and locations, 
and then being very clear and transparent with how those breaches and how cybersecurity actually ladders to the company business strategy and purpose is really what privacy first means to me. So you are collecting data from a customer based on what color they are choosing or based on the style they have been looking for and recommending. This applies both for online shoppers, either through e-commerce or shoppers who are in the store and advertising them and giving some offers to them. So privacy first here, what it means is, am I leveraging the data of an individual user or am I leveraging the pattern and the choice that he's making based on which I am kind of putting my algorithms and engines to recommend. So generalizing without an individual's interest or individual's tracking, we are grouping them in terms of what categorization they are looking at to buy and then recommending it. So this is something which we have to consider from a design thinking perspective while you are you know, defining your strategy. And that comes as a privacy first to start with standard. So this is another thought process where people are looking at and then you having a recommendation and engine will limit by depending on collecting all the necessary data from a customer rather leveraging the knowledge that you already have. Retailers have to first start with consumer or customer centric view, which means customers' data and privacy needs to be of utmost importance. As you know, in today's marketing and retailing world, data is the oil. So that's what really drives all the engines of profitability. So retailers have to start by to understand the landscape, where it is moving, the regulations, and also what are the technologies that are helping them. But also we need to talk about consent management, right? The consent management uh, platforms are CMPs are becoming standard for a legal compliance for ensuring consumer trust. User design or UX experience has to be foremost in the minds of retailers, but when they have digital interactions or touch points, they have to make sure that they are non-coercive and they are more friendly and attractive to improve opt-in rates. I want to understand the customer needs and want to customize my offerings, but at the same time, I want to respect the customer data. I want to make sure that data is protected and also delight the consumers in a way that they should be thanking the retailer for taking care of their preferences in a way that they don't feel like their data is compromised. Well, that wraps another episode of Data Drivers, and I certainly hope you got a lifetime's worth of value from this episode. To learn more about the Retail Cloud Alliance, don't forget to click the link below and subscribe to our channel so that you're first in line to watch all of the latest episodes. For now, though, I'm your host, Andrew Smith of Think Uncommon, and I'll see you next time for more Data Drivers.